Now, schools have already reopened. Kaam to obviously chalta rahega. But what can you do? How should you prep for the summer? That's right. What kind of food to eat? How much water to drink? Should you fast? If you're stepping out, what is the right SPF for you? Now, all these questions come to mind. So, we thought let's address them in a very comprehensive way. So, first, let's understand how bad will really this heat be this summer, in the summer of 2024? Which areas, which months will be most impacted? Sakshi has the details. Let's take you to a journey through India's unpredictable pre-monsoon season this year. April, May and early June typically herald scorching heat waves across northwest India, central India, south peninsula and eastern regions. However, this year's weather patterns have taken an unexpected turn leading to a roller coaster ride of temperature fluctuations and unexpected rainfall as well. March arrived with a cool demeanour in parts of Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and western Uttar Pradesh thanks to the pre-monsoon showers of course. Meanwhile, central areas like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Telangana and Orissa expected some of the frequent rain showers, moderating temperatures as well. As April unfolds, regions like Telangana, coastal Orissa and West Bengal experience a rise in temperatures with rain becoming more and more scarce. Now, the India Meteorological Department's forecast warns of an impending scorching summer with intense weather activities predicted to hit central and east India as well. Areas like Bidharb, Marathwada and North Selangana are anticipating rain and thunderstorms offering relief from the heat wave. Western Himalayas and regions like Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat are in line for rainfall as well expected around April 13th to 18th and these projections indicate a cooler period ahead offering some relief from the heat wave to these parts that I just mentioned. So what does it exactly mean for us? These next 10 to 12 days are concerning because of some shocking weather fluctuations all thanks to these intense pre-monsoon shenanigans. All this while we have been talking about getting rain relief but don't get too comfy as the heat wave might just stage a comeback by the end of April and May isn't off the hook either, right? May brings with it the promise of rain, thunderstorms and dust storms across northwest India and eastern parts of our country as well. Known as Kal Vaisakhi by the locals, these pre-monsoon activities provide a much needed reprieve from the heat. However, be warned, for with great rain comes great responsibility. Widespread damage to the crops, properties and even lives can occur, especially in the intense weather zones of eastern and northeastern India, particularly in the months of May and the first half of June as well. So that's my colleague Sakshi telling you all that you have to look forward to. But have you ever wondered what makes the weather patterns this intense? It's this very fascinating phenomenon. To tell you more about it, my colleague Shrishti has all of the details. Shrishti, first, El Nino, El Nino. Just tell us more. Yes, definitely, Toya. So, uh, like we have rightly been warned by the India Meteorological Department that 2024 summer is going to be one of the hottest summers. If you remember, 2023 ended as the hottest year globally and we have seen temperatures surging past 1.4 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level. That's just on the brink of crossing that 1.5 degree mark, which over 195 nations have committed to uh, prevent from uh, touching. So uh, the India Meteorological Department, as we have rightly been uh, warned, has that the, the uh, heat waves are going to be intense and they're going to last for a longer period. But what is leading to this uh, scorching summer? Uh, as you know, we are living in a constantly warming world, but there's this interesting scientific phenomena which is behind it. So, uh, you know, uh, for hundreds of years, we have been seeing this periodic warming of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So, the term here is uh, El Nino, which is a Spanish term. This is El Nino's uh, Southern Oscillation. Uh, so what happens here is that the equatorial Pacific Ocean, so when the temperatures are warmer than usual, we call it El Nino. When it's cooler than average, we call it La Nina. And when the temperatures are average, we call it you know, neutral conditions. So what's important here is that we are living in an uh, El Nino year. This phenomena started last year. And if you remember, we had a scorching summer last year as well. It continued for almost a year and we had warmer winters and now the scientists have warned that this could lead to even uh, you know the temperatures from rising even more uh, what happens during el nino is that it makes the extreme weather events even more intense 
Hence, you'll have longer heat waves, they'll be more frequent and they'll last for a very long time. Now, like you, Toya, I rightly asked, so El Nino is a Spanish term. Uh, you know, it was first discovered by fishermen in South America. So they called it uh, El Nino because it, you know, it, the time when they observed it was around December. So uh, El Nino in Spanish means little boy. So they called it El Nino. La Nina is a little girl. So, but over the years, we have seen that this climate phenomena has become increasingly important in wake of the rising temperatures, in wake of global warming and climate change. And its impact on India is extremely important. So, uh, as I said, it leads to intense temperatures during summer. But the good news here is, according to IMD, this phenomena is now decreasing in strength. So, by May end, it will decrease. And by June, the conditions will again back to neutral. And which is also good news for the monsoon. If you remember, the southwest monsoon makes its onset over Kerala around the first week of June. So, and El Nino is, you know, not very favorable for the monsoon rains. So, luckily, uh, you know, if the stars are right, we'll definitely have neutral conditions during June and we'll get some relief from these intense period of heat waves, which are usually during April, May and June. Also, to uh, remind our viewers, IMD has warned that there are certain regions which are going to witness increasing strength of heat waves. Gujarat, Madhya Maharashtra, as well as North Interior Karnataka. If you remember, Rayal Seema has already you know, recorded a temperature of about 44.5 degrees Celsius, which is the highest so far. And apart from that, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Urissa, Andhra Pradesh are also some of the most vulnerable states. So uh, as scientists have warned, and so we are telling you all to be prepared for this intense scorching summer and take all the precautions that you can when you step out. All right then. Uh Thanks, uh, Shristi, for that. I love how the hot is the boy and the cool one is the girl. I'm loving the derivatives these names have really come from. So, thanks so much, Shristi, for that. Let's move on now. So, we understand now how hot will it get, when will it be the hottest, and importantly, why does it get so hot. Let's also now bring you another perspective to the heat. It's on how you and I can beat the heat. So, what's the best approach towards diet this summer? Let's bring in the mm. nutritionist Shikha Sharma with us right here. Hi Shikha, good morning. Welcome to TBC. I first want to understand from you, you know, as adults and when it comes to heat, the thing which is really important is hydration, is water. So, how much water really, can you set the record straight for us, is enough for adults and at, you know, what intervals as well? Uh, I think that's the most critical question as you said. So firstly, I'll explain what happens in a heat wave or what happens to the body physiologically. So in a, in a heat condition, physiologically what happens is the body, the, the body is trying to release the heat because all the body processes, whether it's digestion or whether it is breathing or anything else is generating a lot of heat inside the body. So all the blood vessels start dilating to release the heat through the blood and that's why the skin becomes uh, starts perspiring, there is dilation of vessels. The second thing which happens uh, in, a, in a heat condition is that the body starts having a little bit of swelling also. Uh, that is very natural because all tissues and everything starts uh, expanding a little bit in the heat. Like if you notice that the ring which you wear, in summers it's tight and in winters it's slightly loose and that's because the body, the, the tissues are expanding a little bit to release the heat possible. Now typically for this entire physiological process, water is the element which helps it to keep balancing out this heat uh, in the body. And therefore hydration as you uh, asked, for adults at least you should have 10 glasses of water every day. Mm. And this is very critical because without water, the body's physiological processes stop working. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why 10 glasses of water are critical. If you are active, if you are out in the sun, then you may even need much more, which could be about uh, 15 to 20 glasses of water. But 10 is a minimum. Mm. And what intervals should we be having this water at through the day? Actually, yeah, you're right. You know, gulping down a bottle of water is not the right approach. So you should have like, uh, like every, every morning when you get up, you should have two glasses of water on waking up. And then every uh, like two hours, you can have a glass of water. Yeah. Uh, and if of course, if you're in the sun, you can have it more frequently. But otherwise, uh, every hour or two hours, uh, you know, you should have your, you should hydrate yourself. 
and the best way is after the early morning two glasses of water just keep a bottle of water on your table or near your bedside wherever you're working and finish that and then see uh, you know and then if it's uh, another glass of uh, another bottle of water you need so that you reach your goal of 10 glasses of water that's a good tip there shikha but tell us is it a good idea to sort of switch water and also include ors is that a good option so personally uh, even though as a medical doctor we were trained to uh, you know ask people to keep ors with them all the time but i also think that mm. uh, unless you are uh, already dehydrated ors may not necessarily be required because it has salt and sugar mm. and for blood pressure we don't advise salt and for diabetes and for weight we don't advise sugar so i would say use natural forms of uh, hydration like coconut water is there have lot of watermelon in your diet have cucumbers because cucumbers are actually water mm. uh, then similarly uh, even when you come back uh, have bale sherbat have khas sherbat uh, you can have uh, uh, you know uh, things like uh, uh, chutneys hari chutney mint and dhania celery mm. celery juice is excellent for the kidney mm. uh, so these natural the advantage is that they don't put salt or sugar load on your body because ors is salt and sugar so we reserve that for people who are already dehydrated and and then they need to be hydrated very quickly but for regular use i would say all these natural uh, hydration methods are better Okay Shikha we've talked about liquids can we also talk about solids what food should we have what should we stay away from just tell us So first I'll begin with foods which you shouldn't have so first thing is maida suji and uh, corn flour uh, and anything made from maida is very heating for the body wheat is one of the most heating grains available so have grains which are cooling Now according to the Vedic studies the grains which are cooling are for example rice is very cooling then sattu uh, traditionally people in villages used to carry sattu in their little backpacks because it's very very cooling for the body uh, similarly if you see that uh, ragi is also uh, good for the body it's also a good source of calcium uh, quinoa is very good for the body uh, so all these and of course in foods you have then chaat you have buttermilk you have curd you have uh, Uh, like i said uh, shikanji uh, then you have khas sharbat you have cucumbers hari chutneys uh, so all of them are very very cooling for the body okay right so uh, shikha lastly i want to understand schools have now opened right and there is a lot of advice uh, that goes around but for mothers who are packing tiffins right now and filling up bottles do you have any quick anecdotes for them the first thing is that kids are very vulnerable to heat stroke because their bodies are not uh, i would say as strong as an adult so they quickly go into heat stroke and dehydration and they uh, and so first i would say for mothers is hydrate them very well so of course it's age dependent mm. but typically uh, if adults need 8 to 10 glasses of water a day the kid definitely needs 5 to 7 glasses of water a day because kids run around a lot and the, their ability to hydrate themselves Uh, the body, uh, the you know, the physiological processes are faster, and but you have to give them in smaller amounts. So that is number one. Make sure that the kid is not being given sugary drinks. Sugar itself dehydrates the body. So mm. all these uh, carbonated beverages, all these beverages which have a lot of sugar, ice creams. I would say please be careful with ice creams mm. because uh, majority of the ice creams, unless they are all natural. are actually based out of plant oils they have a lot of chemicals and they have a lot of sugar so they are extremely unhealthy for the kid so if they have to eat ice cream let it be a natural dairy ice cream that also uh, not every day because sugar content goes up and sugar is heating for the body mm-hmm. similarly i would say the kids you know uh, all kids love noodles and prepacked noodles and stuff like that uh, please do control that in this season don't give them wheat and maida and noodles kind of stuff or pasta and cheese and pizza because they're very very heating for the body instead you can give them rice based foods which could be idli which could be dosa uh, then again the same sharbats which adults drink even the kid can drink and sweeten with dates or anjeer or or stuff like that which is more natural like jaggery uh, rather than using white sugar uh, then i would say that uh, make sure the kid is not wearing very tight clothes so loose flowing garments or loose shirt loose things are always mm, better for the child t-shirt yeah. absorbing uh, things things you know like cotton 
uh, make sure the kid is not wearing too much of polyester and stuff like that because it doesn't have good absorption. So cottons are the best for the child. Uh, secondly, it's also important that uh, uh, the child should have a cap or something, you know, uh, because when the kids play, if, if uh, the, the, the head absorbs a lot of heat because of black hair. So it is important that uh, the child should have a cap or something to cover the head while, uh, you know, they are going out. And definitely they should keep drinking water. So their sip bottles should be always with them so that they can uh, hydrate themselves regularly. Okay, Shikha, thank you so much for bringing us all of those details. So that's how to take care of your stomach. But another very important factor this summer is obviously taking care of the largest organ, your skin, wearing sunblock. But Sonal, can you tell us, what do you know? What is PA, UVA, SPF? What do you think these things actually stand for? Well, I don't think a lot of us understand what they stand for. We end up going to the supermarket or to the chemist and buying the one which has maximum coverage, right? But why don't we ask about this to an expert as well? Yeah, even I don't, I don't have all the answers. I'm asking you that. But let's bring our next guest in. Uh, Dr. Dipali Bhardwaj is with us. She's a dermatologist. Hi, good morning, Dr. Tipali. Hello, Welcome to the Breakfast Club. Uh, I quickly want to understand, you know, all of us, when we go to buy sunscreen, it looks something like this. It has something called an SPF. It has PA++++. It has UVA, UVB. Now, there are too many things to really keep in account. So, what should one be really looking at? Hmm. If you're buying a sunscreen, what should the label really be saying? You know, uh, interestingly, Sonal, uh, today the market is so much flooded with these kind of products and these are all a gimmick as per a dermatologist like me to, produ uh, to sell a product more costly. PA stands for protection factor. SPF we know is the sun protection factor. <clears throat> PA++ is just like a gradation system. Ideally, for Indians, a sunscreen has to be anything above SPF 26. And of course, if you are in snow and if you are in water, that means if you are in a swimming pool or a beach holiday, you need to reapply the sunscreen more number of times. And also, <clears throat> more, most important factor is that you always buy a cosmeceutical product, with which I mean a sunscreen which has the potency to block both UVA and UVB in this current scenario where mm. there is pollution and greenhouse. So in short, a sunscreen which is from a company which is a cosmeceutical product, SPF 26 and the right quantity, which is a uh, game changer on applying sunscreen, the right quantity of the sunscreen has to be applied. Doctor, can you also tell us, is it entirely the same for men and women when we're putting the cream, are there parts of our body that we need to be more careful of? Just bring us that context. Yes, um, I actually it's the same thing for both men and women. Of course, men are not that diligent and they generally just, you know, giso giso kind. <laughs> they just go, you know, splash on their face and they will not be so gentle is what I have seen in my experience as a practicing doctor. But uh, overall, their skin is also rough, so it doesn't really matter because of shaving and even for the body. But if they can be slightly gentler is better. Uh, and, uh, you know, talking about the quantity of sunscreen, like our finger has a instrument which is three boxes. So one and a half fingertip unit, you know, this is the right quantity of sunscreen application, which has to be applied 15 minutes before going in the sun. So if you buy a sunscreen worth 1000 or 200 rupees, it doesn't matter to me. How much quantity you are applying, if it is SPF 26 above and it's a cosmeceutical product with which we mean it has certain agents which will block all UVA, UVB and UVC skin yeah. cancer which is definitely on the rise. Yeah, but doctor tell us what about kids then? The Should we apply the same one and a half uh, sort of box formula even with the kids? See, definitely even children today need a sunblock because of the pollution and the mm. air and uh, the waves. And uh, But their sunscreen will be different. For them, I just like zinc bentonite, which is a very, which is not at all a chemical, which is very nice. It's a skin soothing lotion, which we use all the time. And, um, you know, so zinc bentonite can be applied for kids. And of, of course, above 12, they have to wear a sunscreen properly. But I'm talking about children, a pedia group, you mm. know, from 5 to 12. Interestingly, AAD, which is like the world's global standard, American Academy of Dermatology, claims and states that sunscreen in children has to be started at the age of three years. 
but uh, I have never advocated oh. and advised any of my patients for that because India still is uh, mm. luckily behind in the skin uh, cancer race at a global mm. level. But uh, definitely zinc bentonite or even our plain and simple aloe vera gel is excellent for protecting uh, kids against the harsh sun rays and the heat waves. So they can just apply that and uh, that should be huh. enough. Hmm. And, and doctor, That's what about the, the reapply question? You know, sometimes you read that you should reapply it every two hours, every four hours. Does that even change based on the SPF? Like if one is getting a SPF 50, can they wait longer before reapplying it? How does that work? Well, that's a great question and honestly, these are gimmicks only to sell products more expensive. Any sunscreen mm. SPF 26 above needs to be reapplied after every three hours. A higher SPF mm. will not going to, is not going to help you that you've just applied it and you're done for the day. These are, you know, just selling products uh, more costlier. These are just methods in that way as per a doctor like me because scientifically it has not been proven. And interestingly, if a woman is wearing makeup also these days, there are powder uh, sunscreens. Men, if they are lazy to reapply sunscreen, they can just maybe apply even aloe vera gel because men are more, uh, you know, accustomed to using lights and camera, uh, this um, laptops, you know, computer screens. Even that is emitting rays. And uh, well, even men, boys and girls today, everybody is using phone all the time. So even that's giving radiation. So if you really don't want to have premature aging, pigmentation, skin cancer and actually aging on your face, then sunscreen is the way to go. Okay. Doctor, thank you. So, doctor coming in there with a strong endorsement for sunscreen. She's saying even aloe vera is good. She's also suggested what younger kids can use for us. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. Let's move on from this now. We're going to bring you a quick check on everything that's taking place in India and across the globe. U.S. regulators uh, launched an investigation into the Boeing plane incident where an engine uh, cover detached mid-flight, striking a wing flap with 135 passengers and six crew on board. The Southwest Airlines flight returned safely to Denver from Houston and the event uh, deepens the security on Boeing safety measures amidst the ongoing concerns. In the United States, as elections near, Donald Trump's secretive plan to resolve the Ukraine conflict involves proposing concessions of Crimea and Donbass to Russia entirely. Critics are condemning the move. They're saying it legitimizes Putin's aggression. Trump's strategy contrasts with that of the current President Biden, who is focusing on a comeback and countering China. Yet support for these concessions remain controversial among his own supporters. Here's something for all you music lovers, introducing Spotify's groundbreaking AI playlist now available to the premium users in the UK and Australia. This uh, tough feature lets you create personalized playlists with just text prompts, whether it's songs to serenade your cat or emojis, get tailored recommendations powered by AI now, plus also enjoy an AI powered DJ for custom music curation. And we're taking you from Spotify to South Korea. South Korea ramping up its military surveillance capabilities. It's launching a second spy satellite amidst escalating tensions with North Korea. Now, this move intensifies the space race between the two Koreas. Both nations right now are aiming to bolster their, their reconnaissance and missile capabilities. Obviously, this is amid heightened regional tensions. At Morgan Valens Indianapolis concert, a joke about Taylor Swift's attendance sparked mixed reactions while some fans cheered, others booed Swift. Now, Wallen clarified the jest urging against booing and expressing appreciation and support as well. The incident captured in several TikTok videos stirred a controversy amongst Swifties. All right, with that, we're going to switch and slip into a very short break. Coming up on the other side, meet the very feisty commandos of JNK. And it's a pack, it's a pack of girls and women who are brimming with patriotism, also keeping our borders and keeping Jammu and Kashmir safe. That's coming up in a moment from now.
The Congress manifesto is in a lot of controversy and the Congress manifesto has evoked some very strong reactions coming in from the BJP and the man who was in charge of the 2004 winning slogan of Congress ka haath aam aadmi ke saath and now the Congress's slogan is Congress ka haath badlenge halat Mr Jairam Ramesh thank you so much for speaking to CNN news 18 Mr Jairam Ramesh could you focus now because of the latest controversy and hear me out According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. Let me let me ask the Prime Minister. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, founder of the Bharati Jan Sangh, was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahasabha of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the founder of the Jan Sangh, was in league with the Muslim League in Sindh and North West Frontier. It was Mr. L. K. Advani and Mr. Jaswan Singh, leaders of the BJP. who went to pakistan and eulogized the leader of the muslim league the man one of the men responsible for the partition of india mohammad ali jinnah it was not the congress party which was in bed with the muslim league it was the Bar the founder of the bharatiya jansang and what is this language of the prime minister a desperate prime minister unable to find any substantive points to make he is talking of tushtikaran he is giving farmers msp legal guarantee tushtikaran is giving 1 lakh to a woman of every poor household tushtikaran is giving is filling 30 lakh government vacancies tushtikaran no, but when you talk about giving special rights to this the minorities is a, this is, why let, does let, let me explain hmm. what have you said in the on the minorities we will ensure that the constitutional rights of each and every citizen of india including the minorities which is enshrined in the constitution of baba saheb ambedkar is fulfilled and this is the reason for the char so par first he gets bibek debroy to speak then he gets anand hegdes to speak then he gets jyoti mirdha to speak he has he doesn't have the courage to speak he wants to replace this constitution of india of which the pillars are one of the pillars is secularism the other pillar is social justice there are other pillars as well and deeply uncomfortable with this Uh, Baba ba Sahib Ambedkar's constitution is thinking of a new constitution. No, as a political party, anyone can set a target, right? I'm not stopping you. But the real reason for the target is to rewrite the constitution. I mean, is this a language that behooves the prime minister? Can't he find anything substantive to talk about? We have given 25 guarantees. We have a Panch Nyai program. What is what is tushtikaran about these guarantees? Okay, so what I, is tushtikaran so about these? General, let me just talk about the caste census thing. I mean, this uh, is completely. No, no, hear me out on I the caste census. I have to say census. this: hmm. the prime minister, this prime minister, every day discovers new depths to plumb for dishonesty, for hypocrisy, and for lying. Okay, General, you, know, you mentioned the caste census. This is something which Rahul Gandhi feels very strongly about. Rajiv Gandhi had talked about an India which is bereft of caste, creed, religion differences and that. India 21st century. Yeah, but 21st century is suddenly talking about the OBC and the caste. Aren't caste. you also doing politics no, 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 over it? Caste it. census in 2011. Please brush up your history. Mr. Narendra Modi's own colleague in Bihar has carried out a caste census. Is he against Nitish Kumar's caste census? Tell me. Welcome back to the Breakfast Club. We're now going to take you to a very special story. Women are of course celebrated always as daughters, mothers, caregivers, but also today we know them as commandos. Women can be fully equipped with automatic weapons, bulletproof vests, they can carry out patrolling duties in armored vehicles. Women can conduct patrolling duties everywhere just to keep you safe both in the house and even outside. And to bring you more about these women, let's take you to Jammu. That's right. Jammu where a small contingent of women personnel of the special operations group has been deployed there ahead of Lok Sabha elections. They are specially trained counter insurgency force in the Jammu and Kashmir police and it's just an eight member team and the contingent had undergone rigorous training for almost 3 months before being deployed on the ground as well. So of course we had to speak to them. Take a look. This is a ground report we've brought you. We'll also be speaking with the DSP. This is DSP Priyanka Kumari. She's the woman who gave them that training. Power, passion, and patriotism. 
This is an eight-member women's squad carrying out patrolling duties in the Jammu and Kashmir Valley. Fully equipped with automatic weapons and bulletproof vests, this small contingent of women personnel can be seen in an armoured vehicle conducting searches in different parts of Jammu. इन महिलाओं को हमने देखा है कि किस तरीके से ये महिलाएं अब आतंक का सफाया करेंगी एंटी टेरर ऑपरेशन जो कि जम्मू कश्मीर में चलते रहते हैं हालांकि अब इस वक्त जम्मू के राजौरी और पुंछ में बहुत तादाद में आतंक जो है वो बुरी तरह से फैला हुआ है और आए दिन वहां पर सर्च ऑपरेशन चलाया जाता है लेकिन इन एंटी टेरर ऑपरेशन में अब महिलाएं भी जो है अत्याधुनिक हथियारों से लेस अब जंगलों में दिखेंगी With nothing but sheer resilience, these women forces are on ground equipped with modern weapons to tackle terrorists. They have undergone rigorous training for three months before being deployed. हमने एक ऑल वुमेन पुलिस कंपोनेंट तैयार किया है जिसको हम पिछले तीन महीने से लगातार ट्रेन कर रहे हैं और मैं ये भी बताता चलूँ कि ये अपने आप में एक महिला सशक्तिकरण का एक लाइव उदाहरण भी है और इन वुमेन टीम को हम ऑल वुमेन पुलिस कंपोनेंट टीम को हम अभी फील्ड में भी उतार रहे हैं जो अपनी डिफरेंट तरह की ड्यूटीज़ जो हैं अंजाम दे रही हैं जिसके अंदर रैंडम एम जो हैं उसको चेक किया जा रहा है स्वीपिंग एक्सरसाइज इन द एरियाज उन सबको उसको ट्रेन किया जा रहा है एलॉन्ग विद डैट हम उनको फायरिंग प्रैक्टिस भी करवा रहे हैं their lives for the nation leaving behind their young children at home these women commandos pick up the armor with fire in the eyes to take on the terrorists लेटिन पे आपने देखा किस तरीके से अब अपने कंधों पे अत्याधुनिक हथियारों के साथ ये करेंगी आतंक का सफाया वीडियो जर्नलिस्ट राजीव के साथ कोमल सिंह न्यूज एट इन इंडिया All right, what a passionate coverage over there. But let's also try and understand a little what these women are doing a little bit in detail. Joining us is DSP Priyanka Kumari. She is the trainer for this entire contingent. Namaskar, madam. हमसे बात करने के लिए बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया. पहले तो मैं बताएं कि ये काफी तगड़ी इनकी तीन महीने की ट्रेनिंग हुई और काफी आपको you know. कठिनाइयों का सामना भी करना पड़ा होगा जम्मू के अंदर हम देख रहे थे कैसे बहुत थिक है फॉरेस्ट उसके बीच में से महिलाएं निकल के अपनी पूरी यू नो you know, पूरा अपना उनका जो आ, करना होता है आगे पीछे देखना होता है और ट्रेनिंग कर रही थी तो कैसे करी आपने ये ट्रेनिंग आ, ये जो हमारी वुमेन कमांडोज जो कि हमारी यहाँ पे आई हैं ऑफ कोर्स इनकी एक रेगुलर ट्रेनिंग की जाती है इसके अलावा जो है इनको टाइमली जो है स्पेशल फोर्सेस के साथ जो है डिप्लॉय करके जो है स्पेशल ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है सो दैट कि ये जो हमारी एंटी मिलिटेंसी ऑपरेशंस जो हम करते हैं काउंटर टेररिस्ट ऑपरेशंस जो करते हैं उसके साथ प्रॉपर तरीके से जो है इक्लिप्ट हो जाए उसके इन्वामेंट के साथ जो है अपने आप को पूरा उसको ढाल पाएँ और टाइमली और रेगुलरली जो है इनकी प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग्स और फायर प्रैक्टिस भी करवाए जाते हैं मैम आप हमें ये भी बता सकते हैं जम्मू और कश्मीर की ये जो पूरी रीजन है इसमें जंगल बहुत है मैम जंगल में कौन कौन सी चैलेंजेस मिलती हैं आप हमें बता सकते हैं लाइक uh, अगर like हम एज अ प्रोफेशनल ट्रेनिंग की बात करेंगे तो इनको जो ट्रेनिंग हम देते हैं वो ऑल काइंड ऑफ टेरन को टेरन के साथ जो है दी जाती है ऐसा नहीं है कि जंगल में ही इवन माउंटेन्स में या कि हम अगर हम बात करें तो अर्बन जो सेंटर्स की बात करें तो इनको हर तरीके की ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है सो दैट कि इन ऑल सिचुएशंस जो हैं ये उसमें वर्कआउट कर पाएँ और अगर स्पेसिफिकली हम फॉरेस्ट एरियाज़ की बात करेंगे या फिर यहाँ के जम्मू कश्मीर के टेरन के के बारे में हम बात करेंगे तो ऑफकोर्स इनको जो है स्पेशलाइज जो है ट्रेनिंग दी गई है और इस सारे जो मतलब टफ सिचुएशंस में जो है टफ सिचुएशंस में इन सब लोगों को जो है एक दूसरे का सपोर्ट करना और कैसे उस सिचुएशन को ओवरकम करना है कैसे एक दूसरे के साथ रहना है एज ए बडी पेयर इनको जो है सारी ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है जी काफी टफ सिचुएशंस तो हैं पर प्रियंका जी हमें जरा बताइए कि आपस में उत्साह रखने के लिए महिलाएं क्या करती हैं हमने जैसे बताया अपनी ओपनिंग में भी कि महिलाएं ये मदर्स हैं वाइव्स हैं डॉटर्स हैं तो आपस में डायनामिक्स कैसा रहता है इतनी टफ ट्रेनिंग के समय 
जब हम एज ए टीम वर्क की बात करते हैं ऑफ कोर्स टीम वर्क में जो है आपको पता ही होगा कि सारे जो है एज ए टीम की तरह वर्क करते हैं और स्पेशली जब हम काउंटर टेररिस्ट ऑपरेशन की बात करते हैं या फिर जो है एंटी मिलिटेंसी ऑपरेशन की बात करते हैं तो सारे जो हमारी जो टीम होती है वो साथ में मिलकर कर काम करती है और एक दूसरे को सपोर्ट करती है हम दो दो के ग्रुप्स में जो है मूव करते हैं और समटाइम्स जो है एक दूसरे के साथ कम्युनिकेशन करने के लिए तो इस तरीके का जो है एक दूसरे का सपोर्ट करने का और एक दूसरे के साथ लाइजन रखने का जो है इनको सारा जो है चीजें जो है बताई गई हैं और उसके साथ ये प्रॉपर तरीके से वर्कआउट भी करते हैं मैम ये जो कमांडोज हैं मैम ये इंस्पायर्ड कैसे रहती है कोई कहावत है कोई कहानी है जो आप एक दूसरे को बताते हैं आ, देखो एज ए वुमेन की अगर हम बात करेंगे तो वुमेन जितने भी अपनी फील्ड से इस मुकाम तक पहुंची होती है वो कहीं ना कहीं से इंस्पायर्ड होकर के ही इस मुकाम तक पहुंची होती है और आपको पता होगा कि सारे वुमेन्स जो है उनकी एक डिफरेंट स्टोरीज होती हैं हर एक वुमेन जो है अपने फील्ड में एक्सपर्टाइज जो पहुंची है वो किसी न किसी स्ट्रगल को अपने टफ टाइम को ओवरकम करके पहुंची है और अपने इवन फैमिली सिस्टम को वो सपोर्ट करके अपनी फैमिलीज को भी वो साथ में जो है उनको संभाल रही हैं और इन केस ऑफ हम बेड फोर्स की बात करें तो टफ ड्यूटीज में भी जो है वो काम कर रही हैं तो मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि इन सब लोगों की जो है अपनी जो है स्टोरीज हैं और अपनी स्टोरीज जो है एक दूसरे के साथ शेयर करती हैं और उससे जो है दूसरी वुमेन्स को भी इंस्पिरेशन मिलती है बट ऑब्वियसली जब कोई भी वुमेन यूनिफॉर्म में जो है बाहर निकलती है तो आपने देखा होगा कि बहुत सारे बच्चे या बहुत सारी जो छोटे गर्ल्स हैं उनको देख करके काफी ज्यादा इंस्पायर्ड होती हैं तो इन सब लोगों की अपनी स्टोरीज हैं तो जो कि सबको इंस्पायर्ड करती हैं जी बट प्रियंका जी हमें जरा बताइए कि इस समय आपको बहुत सारी महिलाएं देख रही होंगी ये स्टोरी देख रही है समझ रही है और कई लोगों का मन करता होगा फोर्सेज ज्वाइन करने का आपका उनको एडवाइस क्या है कि क्या कै, कैसे प्रिपेयर करके आए कि अगर वो कॉम्बैट में जाना चाहती हैं अभी हमने जो देखा होगा कि अगर हम बात करें तो बहुत सारे फील्ड में और बहुत सारे यू नो वर्ल्ड फोर्सेस में जो है हमारी लेडीज फीमेल्स जो हैं बहुत बढ़ चढ़ के आगे आ रही हैं कि किसी भी फील्ड में हम देखें तो लेडीज का जो है वो पार्टिसिपेशन जो है वो इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो Mm. मेरी तरफ से जो है हमारी वुमेन्स जो ऑलरेडी काम कर रही है उनके लिए तो यही एडवाइस है कि आप अपनी जो है स्पिरिट को हाई रखें और जो है अपने टफ सिचुएशंस में जो है आगे बढ़ें और जो भी आपको चीज़ें दी जाती हैं जो भी आपको काम दिया जाता है या फिर जो भी ऑपरेशन होते हैं उसमें जो है वर्कआउट करें अच्छे तरीके से और जो हमारी गर्ल्स जो भी स्कूल गोइंग या फिर जो इस फील्ड में आना चाहती हैं ऑफकोर्स वो बढ़ चढ़ के आगे आए बिकॉज बिकॉज जब तक वुमेन का पार्टिसिपेशन बढ़ेगा और उससे जो है बहुत यू नो एक स्ट्रेंथ इंक्रीज होगी और बहुत ज़्यादा और इस टाइम पे तो हर हर फील्ड में आई थिंक कि वुमेन जो है इम्पावर्ड हो रही हैं तो दिस इज आई थिंक वेरी यू नो यूनिक स्टेप इन डीड सो जोश बनाए रखें और आगे बढ़ें दैट्स द मैसेज कमिंग इन फ्रॉम द ट्रेनर ऑफ दैट कमांडो ऑफ ऑल दोज कमांडोज इन दैट कंटिन्यू इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर थैंक यू सो मच प्रियंका जी हमसे बात करने के लिए सो टोया वीमेन आर रीचिंग देयर वेरी ओन गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड्स बट वट इफ आई टोल्ड यू दैट गोल्ड इट सेल्फ इज प्री मच आउट ऑफ रीच दीज डेज वेल इट्स ओके बिकॉज यू स्टिल हैव सिल्वर इट्स नॉट जस्ट गोल्ड इट्स सोरिंग इन वैल्यू सिल्वर टू इज एज वी स्पीक इट इन ऑल टाइम हाई Yes, because silver is at an all-time high at nearly eighty-two thousand rupees per kg. So, what should you do? Should you buy? Should you sell? Should you hold? We went back to Manisha to get some answers. Na mangu so na chandi seems to be getting true as consumers are finding it very difficult to buy gold and silver at these record highs. The global silver price is while are trading at a three years highs, far far away from its all time highs. But it is the Indian prices which are trading at an all time highs at above eighty two thousand rupees a kg. The silver is taking support from record gold prices and of course the industrial metals which have been surging up as well. Silver prices have gained up by 11% in last week and 14% in last one month. If you look at the trajectory of silver prices in India, until 1990 the silver prices were pretty low at around 6400. 
By 2000, we hadn't seen much of gain coming in as the price is recorded 7,900 per kg of a level. By 2010, we saw the prices more than double up at 27,000 rupees a kg. By 2020, it was 2020, it was yet another doubling at 60,000 rupees a kg. 2022 saw a high of around 55,000, and last year, that's 2023, we saw an all-time high at 78,600. Right now, we're trading at yet another record high of 82,000 rupees a kg in case of silver. From a poor man's goal, it has become an important industrial metal. When you look at the global markets itself, while the production this year is expected to gain up by 4.1% to 916 million ounces, well, the consumption is anticipated much higher at 1.2 billion ounces. When you look at silver, there's a huge buying opportunity here because silver usage in green energy is on a high. When you look at EVs, well, the silver used here is anywhere between 25 to 50 grams per car. In hybrid, it's used anywhere between 18 to 34 grams. Also, the global EV sales are on a strong up move and that has been supportive. If you look at the automotive sector in 2022, silver was used at 55 million ounces by the automotive sector, which 2025 could see a high of almost 90 million ounces of an estimate. Also, silver is used in photovoltaic. The demand there also is anticipated higher from 47 million ounces in 2014 to 100 million ounces in 2020. And this year, that demand could be at 161 million ounces. Well, silver is headed higher is what the global banks and Wall Street brokerages seem to be telling us. Gold already has run up into a heated run and now silver can outperform gold in the next 6 to 12 months. Silver can be bought in physical, via cutlery, statues, bars, coins, etc. If you are investing, you can also buy silver in digital form or via ETFs. Okay, let's take you very quickly now to the world of sports. It was a hat-trick of wins for KKR at the top of the season. It was a never-before-seen set of matches for the franchise in IPL history. But all of that changed last night when they ran into the Chennai Super Kings. Match number 22 at the MH Dhamram Stadium in Chennai witnessed a captain's knock by Rituraj Gaikwad that helped CSK to a hat-trick of wins at home this season. Can CSK look beyond MS Dhoni then? That's the million-dollar question. JB Ultra will attempt to answer it. <laughs> Yes, KKR have finally been stopped. The KKR juggernaut, which had seen the team for the first time in 16 years win its first three matches, was brought to a halt by who else but Chennai Super Kings. Not MS Dhoni's Chennai Super Kings, but Rituraj Gaikwad's Chennai Super Kings. Looking at the two teams before last night's match, on paper, you thought there would be fireworks because Phil Saul, Sunil Narayan, Angrish Raghuvanshi, uh, Andre Russell, Rinku Singh, Shreyas Iyer, all these big hitters, if they got first use of that Chepok track, you thought something, something entertaining would happen. But nothing like that happened. It was a gripping, turning track, slow bounce, variable bounce, and on that, KKR could only get to 137. Not surprisingly, Spin had a big say once again with that man with the golden arm, Ravindra Jadeja, taking three wickets, including two in one over for just 18 runs, as well as a perfect display of fielding with Jadeja taking two catches to get to 100 catches overall in the IPL. A sluggish surface, like I mentioned, no KKR batsman really getting going. It was all about the power play, and despite losing Phil Salt, to the first ball of the match, I think KKR did pretty well to get 56 off the power play overs. But then once Jadeja came on and then even Rachin Ravindra bowled, it was going to be tough from there. Mahish Thikshana, Tushar Deshpande, Mustafiz Rahman, all these bowlers just did so well to keep KKR to a total which proved rather easy in the end. It was, it was not a, a brisk chase from CSK. We saw Rituraj Gaikwad really struggling for timing initially, but the longer that Gaikwad stayed at the crease, 
the consistency, the fluency started to show and he finished with 67 not out. I personally was glad to see that instead of Ajinkya Rahane batting at number 3, the CSK management sent New Zealand batter Daryl Mitchell because Mitchell is a bigger striker against spin, he bats with more intent than Rahane and I think the way that Mitchell batted, didn't get a lot of runs, 25 off 19, but the approach and the intent he showed, I think it's a clear indication of how CSK should plan their batting. And after that, Shivam Dubey. Is there anyone who hits the ball bigger, especially spinners, than Shivam Dubey? Came in at number four, got 28 of 18 balls, got out just, just on the doorstep of victory. But man, oh man, did you hear the noise that echoed across the ch the Chipok Stadium when MS Dhoni came out to bat? Hardly two, three runs left, but Dhoni walks out and you felt the ground move. No matter where you were across the world watching that match, the noise that reverberated across that Chipok Stadium when Thala Dhoni came out to bat uh, was just quite something. The crowd, the Chennai faithful, the Canary Yellow fans probably wanted Dhoni to go first ball. It didn't happen. He faced a dot ball and just got a single and let the new captain of CSK, Ritraj Gaikwad, finish off that chase. But you could just sense the, the urgency with which the fans expected Tala Dhoni to come out and do some magic once again. It didn't happen, but after two losses, CSK are still in the top four with another win. KKR finally getting a loss, but they're still firmly in the top four. So while I said earlier, while it was not the most entertaining of matches because of that slow and sticky wicket at the Chippaw. Overall, a good win for CSK. Maybe a few wake-up calls for KKR. But overall, as I predicted before this IPL, two of the most consistent teams in this tournament are very much in the top four. And I think we're going to see a few more surprises from KKR and CSK as the tournament progresses. Okay, and it's time now for yet another pit stop here on TBC. When we come back, we take you straight to Vaishnu Devi because remember, today is day one of Navratri and Vaishnu Devi is all decked up. That and more on the other side. We'll see you in just a few minutes. The Congress manifesto is in a lot of controversy and the Congress manifesto has evoked some very strong reactions coming in from the BJP and the man who was in charge of the 2004 winning slogan of Congress ka haat aam aadmi ke saath and now the Congress's slogan is Congress ka haat badlenge halat Mr. Jairam Ramesh. Thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. Mr. Jairam, I'm just going to focus now because of the latest controversy and hear me out. According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. Let me, let me ask the Prime Minister. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, founder of the Bharati Jan Sangh, was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahasabha of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the founder of the Jan Sangh, was in league with the Muslim League in Sindh and Northwest Frontier. It was Mr. L.K. Advani and Mr. Jaswan Singh, leaders of the BJP, who went to Pakistan and eulogized the leader of the Muslim League, the man, one of the men responsible for the partition of India, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. It was not the Congress party which was in bed with the Muslim League, it was the, Bharat, the founder of the Bharati Jansang. And what is this language of the Prime Minister, a desperate Prime Minister, unable to find any substantive points to make? He is talking of Tushtikaran. He is giving farmers MSP legal guarantee. Tushtikaran is giving one lakh to a woman of every poor household, Tushtikaran is giving, is filling 30 lakh government vacancies, Tushtikaran. I, I, but I, I, when I you talk say about giving special rights to the minorities, a, this, this, why let, does... Let, let me explain. Hmm. What have we said in the, on the minorities? We will ensure that the constitutional rights of each and every citizen of India, including the minorities, which is enshrined in the constitution, of Baba Sahib Ambedkar is fulfilled. And this is the reason for the Char Sopar. First he gets Bibek De Broy to speak, then he gets Hanant Hegdes to speak, then he gets Jyoti Mirda to speak. He has he doesn't have the courage to speak. He wants to replace this constitution of India, of which the pillars are one of the pillars is secularism, the other pillar is social justice. There are other pillars as well. And deeply uncomfortable with this 
Baba Sahib Ambedkar's constitution is thinking of a new constitution. No, as a political party, anyone can set a target, right? I'm not stopping you. But the real reason for the target is to rewrite the constitution. I mean, is this a language that behooves the prime minister? Can't he find anything substantive to talk about? We have given 25 guarantees. We have a Panch Nyai program. What is what is Tushti Karan about these guarantees? Okay, so what I, is Tushti Karan so about General, let me just talk about the caste census thing. I mean, this uh, is no, 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 hear me out I on I the have caste census. Hmm. The prime minister, this prime minister, every day hmm. discovers new depths to plumb for dishonesty, for hypocrisy, and for lying. Okay. You know, you mentioned the caste census. This is something which Rahul Gandhi feels very strongly about. Rajiv Gandhi had talked about in India, which is bereft of caste, creed, religion, differences and in that. India 21st century. Of caste. Yeah, but 21st century, you're suddenly talking about the OBC and the caste. A, Aren't caste. you also doing politics over it? caste census in 2011. Please brush up your history. Mr. Narendra Modi's own colleague in Bihar has carried out a caste census. Is he against Nitish Kumar's caste census? Tell me. In 2011, no, but why are you remembering the caste census just ahead of the Lok Sabha election? What the BJP is asking? We've been saying for the last three years, socio-economic. We, I was the rural. Welcome back. It's also the first day of Navratri festival today. So very happy Navratra to all the viewers of TBC. It's called Pratipada and the day is dedicated to goddess Shail Putri who is described in the scriptures as the daughter of the mountains. Chaitra Navratri celebrates the nine forms of goddess Durga and the feminine energy. To bring this energy into your life, we're going to be taking you to the decked up, the beautiful Mata Vaishno Devi Shrine in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's take a look. जग जननी माँ जगदम्बा के चैत्र नवरात्रों का आज पहला दिन है और देश भर से लोग माँ भगवती के दरबार में दर्शन करने के लिए आए हैं लेकिन यहाँ पर आते ही यहाँ की साज सज्जा फूलों की खुशबू महकती हुई हमें मिली और यहाँ के जो दर्शन करने जो देश भर से लोग आए हैं वो यहाँ पर अपने आप को पहले निहार रहे हैं क्योंकि यहाँ पर जितनी खूबसूरती यहाँ पर आने आकर देखने को मिली है वो देखते ही बन रही है राजीव आपको तस्वीरों में दिखा रहे हैं कि कितने खूबसूरत ये जो फूल हैं, ये बहुत समय लगता है इनको यहाँ पर पूरे भवन को सजाने में क्योंकि 500 मीटर का ये दायरा है जो भवन से लेके आधे मार्ग तक मनोकामना भवन तक ये सजाया जाता है और बेहद इन खूबसूरत फूलों के साथ जो है लोग जो है वो यहाँ पर पिक्चर्स खिंचवा रहे हैं सेल्फीज ले रहे हैं और यहाँ पर खुद की अनुभूति कर रहे हैं कि कैसे माँ भगवती के दरबार में वो आए हैं और यहाँ पर एक अलग सा आनंद है अलग सा माहौल बना हुआ है हो भी क्यों ना चैत्र नवरात्रों का पहला दिन है आज और अभी नौ दिन बाकी हैं और जिन फूलों की खास हम आपको बात कर रहे हैं हम आपसे वो फूल जो है पंद्रह से बीस दिन मुरझाते भी नहीं है पहले खूबसूरत फूलों के साथ देखिए किस तरीके से देश भर से आने वाले यात्री यहाँ की साज सज्जा के बाहर तस्वीरें खिंचवा रहे हैं आनंद ले रहे हैं और देखिए किस तरीके से कितना समय लगा होगा कितना लंबा वक्त लगा होगा पहले मूर्तियाँ लगाई होंगी फिर फूलों से सजावट हुई होगी और फूलों से भी माँ भी लिखा है गुलाब के फूलों से कितना खूबसूरत यहाँ पर माँ लिखा हुआ है हर कोई आनंदित हो रहा है हर कोई यहाँ पर आकर तस्वीरें खिंचवा रहा है और बेहद खूबसूरत नज़ारा जो है वो इस समय भवन का देखने को मिल रहा है सुबह की पहली किरण के साथ ही लोगों ने यहाँ पर आकर दर्शन करने शुरू कर दिए हैं हालांकि लोग पिछली संध्या ही पहुंच गए थे और पूर्व संध्या में भी हमने देखा कि कितना ज्यादा जो लोगों का जो यहाँ पर आंकड़ा जो है वो देखने को मिला था हजारों की संख्या में लोग जो है वो माता वैष्णो देवी के दरबार में पहुंच चुके हैं और देखिए कितनी खूबसूरती से आपको भवन भी दिखाएंगे ये सुबह की सूरज की पहली किरण अभी भवन में पहुंची नहीं है लेकिन हजारों की संख्या में यहाँ पर श्रद्धालु देश पर से पहुंच चुके हैं और आज वो माता रानी के दर्शन करेंगे बेहद खूबसूरत नज़ारा और आप देखिए कितनी ज़्यादा तादाद में लोग जो हैं यहाँ पर लोगों की आवाजाही है कड़ी सुरक्षा है और भारी भरकम हथियारों के साथ सेना और जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस के जो जवान हैं वो भी यहाँ पर पहुँचे हैं और हो भी क्यों ना क्योंकि यहाँ पर जो देश भर से लोग आते हैं उनकी रक्षा सुरक्षा का भी जिम्मा जो है यहाँ के प्रशासन ने पूरी तरह से लिया है 
All right, khubsurat to hai kafi nazara and that too at 6:30 in the morning. Look at the crowds over there. Quite spectacular visuals coming in there from Jammu and Kashmir. So it's a big day, it's an auspicious day, but will it turn out to be one at the stock market? Let's find out. Next we bring you a special section on financial markets powered by Money Control Pro, Money Control's premium destination for investing and business insights. Let's check in with the markets first. GIF Nifty in Dai indicates a very stable opening for the Indian stock market. So, crude oil prices are holding firm. This is amid tensions in the Middle East that continue. US markets close with little changes in values yesterday at all. Investors are still awaiting fresh inflation data as we speak. Gold prices rising to record highs on purchases by central banks. But what about the sectors? Let's see what's in focus for Money Control Pro. Well, fertilizer companies, which are now awaiting monsoon's arrival with optimism. And however, they face a demand challenge as the Rabi season has, been, has not been as robust as expected. A cut in subsidy and gradual firming up of the input prices are other some of the challenges they need to grapple with. So what should investors be looking at then? That's obviously the key question. You can log into Money Control Pro to find out more about the fertilizer sector and all other actionable insights. It's the best that you'll ever need. Brought to you by Money Control. All right, with that, it's a wrap on The Breakfast Club. Today, it's an auspicious day. We spoke about uh, Navratri. It's uh, Guri Parva here in Maharashtra. Everybody's all decked up. Streets are decked up. People are decked up. Also, uh, you know, lots of other festivals happening, even Ugadi down south. So, it's a good, good day. You all go have a beautiful one as well. We'll see you again tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Bye-bye. Goodbye. The Congress manifesto is in a lot of controversy and the Congress manifesto has evoked some very strong reactions coming in from the BJP and the man who was in charge of the 2004 winning slogan of Congress ka haat aam aadmi ke saath and now the Congress's slogan is Congress ka haat badlenge halat Mr. Jairam Ramesh. Thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. Jairam, I'm just going to focus now because of the latest controversy and hear me out. According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. Let me, let me ask the Prime Minister. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, founder of the Bharati Jan Sun, was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahasabha of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the founder of the Jan Sun, was in league with the Muslim League in Sindh and Northwest Frontier. It was Mr. L.T. Adwani and Mr. Jaswan Singh, leaders of the BJP, who went to Pakistan and eulogized the leader of the Muslim League, the man, one of the men responsible for the partition of India, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. It was not the Congress party which was in bed with the Muslim League, it was the, Bar the founder of the Bharati Jansan. And what is this language of the Prime Minister, a desperate Prime Minister, unable to find any substantive points to make? He is talking of Tushtikaran. He is giving farmers MSP, legal guarantee, Tushtikaran. He is giving one lakh to a woman of every poor household, Tushtikaran is giving, is filling 30 lakh government vacancies, Tushtikaran. I, I, but I, when I, you I talk about giving special rights to the minorities, a, this, this, why let, does... Let, let me explain. Hmm. What have you said in the, on the minorities? We will ensure that the constitutional rights of each and every citizen of India, including the minorities, which is enshrined in the constitution, of Baba Sahib Ambedkar is fulfilled. And this is the reason for the Char Sopar. First he gets Bibek De Broy to speak, then he gets Hanan Thegdes to speak, then he gets Jyoti Mirda to speak. He has he doesn't have the courage to speak. He wants to replace this constitution of India, of which the pillars are one of the pillars is secularism, the other pillar is social justice. There are other pillars as well. And deeply uncomfortable with this uh, ba Baba Sahib Ambedkar's constitution is thinking of a new constitution. No, as a political, political party, anyone can set a target, right? I'm not stopping you.
A very good morning to all our viewers. You're watching the morning news on CNN News 18. I'm Anjali Pandey here to take you through all the latest news and updates from across the nation and around the world. And our top focus continues to remain on the politics that is brewing over the NIA attack that happened in West Bengal. Now, days after the NIA team was attacked in West Bengal's East Medinipur, the political slugfest continues between the BJP and the TMC. A delegation of TMC leaders staged dharna outside the Election Commission's office in the national capital yesterday. The delegation was led by senior TMC leaders like Derek O'Brien, Saket Gokhale, Shantanu Sen and Dola Sen. Prior to Staging the protest, the delegation met a full bench of the Apex poll body over their demands. Now, the TMC has been alleging that the central probe agencies have been targeting the opposition parties at the behest of the BJP-led centre. Meanwhile, the BJP has also launched a scathing attack on TMC, raising questions on the law and order situation in the state of West Bengal. Bengal BJP President Shukanto Majumdar said, and I quote, Mamta government must answer why is there a rise in blasts in Bengal. In fact, he further accused TMC of orchestrating violence in the state of West Bengal. को जेल में भेजेगा अरे अभी तो जेल हो गया अभी तो हिंदुस्तान को जेल बना दिया लोकतंत्र को अब जेल बना दिया गणतंत्र को अब जेल बना दिया हर जगह में जेल तो पहले ही बना दिया एनआईए सीबीआई बीजेपी का भाई भाई आप तीन बजे जाके हमला करते हैं महिला के ऊपर और पांच बजे पुलिस को इंफॉर्मेशन देता है And we're getting some more inputs on the story. Now we're learning that the TMC continues their dharna outside police station in the national capital. But what the Delhi police is saying that uh, they have relieved them, but uh, they have in fact told them to go, but the TMC leaders themselves did not go, is what the Delhi police is saying as far as the dharna pradarshan by the TMC leaders is concerned. Let's listen in to some reactions coming in on this. All India Trinamool Congress is continuing its 24-hour dharna against the Modi government's blatant, brazen misuse of central agencies, NIA, IT, CBI and ED in the general elections of 2024 against the opposition. These central agencies are being used to cripple the opposition to take the opposition's focus away from elections. Elections of 2024 are not going to be a level playing field. ED, income tax, sub central agency ko BJP ka branch office manta hai. Aur wo sochte hai sachi me ki modi hai to mumkin hai to jo ji chahe kar sakte. Isi liye. अभी तो इलेक्शन कमीशन का जुरिस्टिक्शन में हम सब है मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट चल रहा है फिर भी उन लोगों का मन मर्जी मोदी बाबू और अमित शाह का मन मर्जी बीजेपी का मन मर्जी एनआईए सीबीआई ईडी और इनकम टैक्स चल रहा है और सब अपोजिशन को डिस्टर्ब कर रहा है ताकि वो ढंग से शांति से इलेक्शन ना लड़ सके and now CNN News 18's Nikhil Akwani is joining us live from Mandir Marg police station where the TMC leaders are staging the dharna. Uh, Nikhil, what are the demands that are being raised by these TMC leaders? So, Anjali, uh, we are reporting from outside the Mandir Marg uh, police station and as you have rightly mentioned in the very start that the Delhi police have relieved them but they are sitting on their protest. There are a couple of demands which are being raised by the TMC delegation who yesterday met the election commissioner after which they set on a 24-hour protest. So, we are starting with the visual in the very first place. My camera person Rajesh Bharadwaj is showing you the visual of those MPs who are set on the protest. We can see Derek O'Brien who is a member of parliament, uh, Shantanu Sen as well, Saket Gokhale and uh, Dola Sen 
Sagarikan and Sagarika Ghosh as well, they were also seen here and they have gone to change and uh, in a short while from now they will also be joining the protest and we are expecting that at about 10 a.m. they are going to speak with the media. As far as the demands are concerned, yesterday they met the election commissioner with a couple of demands. The primary uh, uh, demand which they are raising is that they want the change of the directors of the central agencies, particularly uh, those investigating agencies which are currently in some matter or the other investigating different cases in the state of Bengal, be it NIA, CBI or income tax. So this is something which is being said uh, by the TMC leaders that at a time when the elections are on its peak, at a time when the leaders of the TMC party, they are busy campaigning. That is the time when the central agencies are working on the behest of the Bharti Janta party to make some of the trouble and to make it even more difficult for the TMC leaders to campaign or even to contest the election. This is the demand which is being raised by them and they are also saying at the same time that they are working on the directions of one uh, TM, uh, one BJP leader in the state, Tiwari, who has handed over a couple of leaders list to the uh, central agencies and the directions have been given by the BJP leader to actually mount some of the trouble to them. So these are the de details which are coming out from the TMC. Okay. Right, Nikhil. But the question that arises is that are these demands feasible? Well, uh, this is uh, the uh, question which is being raised right outside the Mandemark police station as well because you cannot just raise a demand and expect it to be completed in just 24 hours. And yesterday only, uh, after meeting the election commission, they said they want the immediate change of the directors. And this is something which is not feasible and they just want the media attention. This is the reason why they have sat here right outside the police station to get all the media attention from all the national media to make a point out of it. Uh, and also it is the prerogative of the government as to who the chief or the directors of the central agencies are going to be. But the allegations which are being made by the TMC leaders is that uh, the previous cases which were filed against the TMC leader of those pertaining to the year 2021-2022 those are the cases which are currently being investigated by the central agencies. In fact, uh, just days ahead of the NIA raid which took place in East Medinapur, there was uh, this list of the 30 leaders which was given to the CBI officers. And this is, was, uh, this is what actually uh, you know, uh, made the TMC leader even more furious. Uh, so all the leaders in the very first place, they have come out together on a single platform. Uh, and unanimously they are saying that uh, the directors should be changed. And there is a strong reaction as well which has come out from the chief minister of the state of Bengal, Mamta Banaji as well. And all these leaders unanimously are saying that there is no level playing field. And it is only with the election commissioner uh, to conduct the elections free and fair for the upcoming general polls 2024. Thank you. All right, Nikhil, please stay with us. We're also being joined by CNN News 18's editor is Kamalika Sen Gupta. Uh, Kamalika, so the TMC was alleging that the BJP and the NIA had planned the raids that happened in East Mednipur when the NIA team was attacked. But the NIA has clearly refuted all the allegations, in fact, saying that uh, the attack was unprovoked. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, NIA has totally refuted the claims of Trinamool Congress in one side. On the other hand, uh, before the first phase of election, with the NIA attack and now the Trinamool uh, MP and other leaders sitting in Dharna in Delhi and also National General Secretary Abhishek Banerjee meeting the governor yesterday tonight, this has taken a totally political turn. And in one hand, the BJP is saying that they are actually corrupted and they are involved in all uh, sorts of nefarious activity. Just to show a victim card, they are doing this without any reason that does not have any substance. On the other hand, the Trinamool Congress is saying that they have a CCTV footage which shows that Jitin Tiwari, the BJP um, leader, went to meet this NIA SP. And that is the reason their point is one, when the DG and the other DAs are transferred without any reason, without any proof, then why the chiefs of all these agencies will not be changed during the election time? All right, Kamalika and Nikhil, please uh, stay with us. Let's take a look at some more political reactions on this story. The thing is that I have said that whether the Jitendra Tiari uh, they have met uh, NISSP in Kolkata, it has not been confirmed until yet. Number, thing, number two thing is JT Tiari is Jitendra Tiari, that is another question. 
जेटी तिहारी इफ ही इज जितेंद्र तिवारी ही एंटर्ड इन दैट बिल्डिंग देर आर ऑलमोस्ट वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड फ्लैट्स आर देर एज पर आई हैव द इन्फॉर्मेशन सो इट हैज नॉट बीन प्रूव दैट the uh, jitendra tiwari went to meet that sp they are saying it's 26 march which is in the mcc time but the thing is that the, it has not been proved na whether the jitendra tiwari jit tiwari is jitendra tiwari first question will arise mm -hmm. whether that jit tiwari is jitendra tiwari that you have to prove first question should be there why only in this part of country only the in the state of west bengal this kind of incidents of blasters are happening that is the co important question without You change the DG of West Bengal Police, and that too twice in 48 hours. You change the SPs of five different districts, the DMs, because BJP leaders have requested. There's no proof in hand, but when we are furnishing proof, we are furnishing the visitors' book, the log, the register of SP NIA's residence on the 26th of March. We have furnished the lease agreement of SP NIA's. current residents in new town despite those proof and we have cctv footages as well where the bjp functionary here namely jitendra tiwari is walking with a parcel in hand and doing a clandestine meeting secretly discreetly covertly without letting anyone know and uh, nikhil akwani continues to stay with us from mandir marg police station nikhil so what is the plan of the tmc leaders for today will they uh, continue to stage this uh, dharna throughout the day well as far as the plan of the tmc delegation is concerned yesterday they wanted to sit on a protest right outside the election commission and since no permission was sought from the delhi police this is the reason why they were detained immediately and they were uh, taken to the different place and uh, they were eventually brought to the mandir marg police station where after a point they were released as per the protocol uh, whatever the political uh, protest uh, happens in the capital city without permission so they are taken into the custody for a while and after that they are released so, similar was the process which was followed by the delhi police in this case as well but they wanted to prove a point this is the reason why they have just sat right outside the police station even after being uh, relieved by the delhi police so they are expected to make out a statement as well before the media this is the reason why they are sitting here and they already said that they are going to sit here until their demands are met and they are going to be here very much for 24 hours and uh, if you go by the detail yesterday they reached out at the ec office at about 3:55 a.m. and they said on the protest at about 4:20 or 25. So, if you go by the 24-hour detail, uh, by 4 p.m. today, 24 hours will be completed. But we need to see as to what is the further course of action, which is going to be taken by the TMC delegation. But as per the details, they are going to remain here very much, at least for next few hours till the completion of their time, which is the 24-hour uh, deadline. And also, in a short while from now, at about uh, 10 a.m., as per the sources, they are going to make a statement. as well before the media but in the visual set again for the viewers who are now joining us on cnn news again that these are the couple of mps and yesterday at about uh, 4 pm a delegation of the 10 members of the tmc they reached out at the ec office but now what we can see is that many of the member of parliament from the tmc party they have set on the protest we can see derek o'brien we can see shantanu sen we can see sakit gokhle as well and there are two women parliamentarians as well from the side of the tmc party Sagarika Ghosh, who is a uh, newly Rajya Sabha MP from PMC, and Dola Sen as well. They have gone to change, and after a while, they will be joining here at the site where these guys are protesting. And in a short while from now, they are going to make out a statement before the media as well. So this is their demand that they want the change of the directors immediately by the election commissioner, because now the right is with the election commissioner uh, to take these calls as to whom to transfer and whom to not. So we need to see as to what is. The reaction which is coming out from the side of the election commission as well just uh, right before the polls thank you all right nikhil please stay with us kamalika is also with us on the story kamalika so the tmc is in fact also demanding the change of election commission chief so can we say that the tmc does not even trust the election commission well, absolutely that is very clear that they don't even now trust the election commission uh, uh, election commission chief because yesterday abhishek banerji he clearly stated that the way things are going on that they are listening to the bjp leaders and not the other leaders and there is no level playing field so it is quite clear that uh, that they are playing also one sided so definitely the trinamool congress is also now putting question on the role of ec day before yesterday also 
Now, Mamata Banerjee in a rally said that she salutes to EC, BJP salutes to EC every day. And if <clears throat> the election commission continues like this, then the entire world will see that democracy is jeopardized and this is the condition. So that is what her statement was also. And she, she actually criticized the election commission and stated that the world will see this. So uh, it's quite clear that it is not only now the agencies, but EC is also under attack from Trinamool Congress. Uh, they are attacking uh, EC that they are not giving a level playing field for all the political parties to contest, to play in the election. All right, Kamalika and Nikhil, thank you so much for all those details. We'll keep coming back to you for more updates on the story. As of now, let's take a look at what Derek O'Brien had to say about this dharna. Injury has got worse, but we are here to fight. So we will carry on our peaceful dharna. This is the situation. ये तो बाहर आके तो फिर उठा के ले ही जाएंगे ना ये तो ये तो क्या करूं ये क्या करूं एक साइड ये एमसीसी है मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट है ये सब ये तो ताना शाही हंड्रेड परसेंट ताना शाही बट वी आर फ्रॉम त्रिनमूल कांग्रेस वी विल फाइट दिस And right now we have some breaking news coming in from the state of Tamil Nadu where the Enforcement Directorate is conducting raids at across uh, 35 places in Chennai and uh, these are linked to drug kingpin Jafar Sadiq. So that's the latest update that's coming in from Tamil Nadu. CNN News 18's Purnima Murli is now joining us with more details on this. Purnima, what more details do we have about these raids by the ED? Well, the Enforcement Directorate is now currently carrying out raids in uh, in Tamil Nadu uh, as part of uh, uh, the drug trafficking case, which uh, is linked to uh, former DMK functionary Jafar Sadiq. Uh, 25 premises, including Chennai, Trichy and Madurai, are currently being raided. The residence Jafar Sadiq, his uh, uh, friend and also film uh, director, are some of the places that are being raided. Uh, we'll have to uh, wait for more details, but the raids began as early as 7.30 uh, uh, a.m. Remember, uh, Jafar Sadiq was, uh, was arrested by the NCB last month for his uh, uh, alleged involvement in, uh, in, in, in the smuggling, in the, in, in the alleged smuggling of about uh, 3,500 3, kg uh, of, uh, uh, of drugs. And therefore, uh, the raids are currently underway and these are linked to uh, Jafar Sadiq, the former uh, MK functionary. All right, Punima, stay with us. So these are the shots that are coming in from Chennai where the raids are being conducted by the Enforcement Directorate. But Punima, do we have any information about any recovery so far? Well, so far, uh, so far, no official uh, statement or uh, no no information. What we are given to understand from sources, from the ED sources, is that uh, the raids began as early as uh, 7.30 a.m. At, at, at 25 premises in Chennai, Madurai and Trichy and these are linked to uh, uh, Jafar Sadiq. Uh, we'll have to wait for more official uh, details and information on uh, the recoveries. Uh, so uh, currently raids are underway at uh, 25 locations in Chennai and other uh, cities is what we are given to understand at this point in time. All right, Purnima, thank you so much for getting us all those details on the raids that are underway by the Enforcement Directorate in Chennai. Right now, we have some more breaking news coming in from Maharashtra. And a fire broke out in a go-down at Bhivandi, which consists of wood. And this go-down is situated near Yevainaka in Bhivandi Taluka. And also, there is a petrol pump close to the location where fire has broken out. So these are the visuals uh, of the go-down where the fire broke out in Bhivandi, which uh, consists of wood. CNN News 18's Yesha Kotak is now joining us with more details on this. Yesha, has the fire been doused off? Uh, as of now, what we see is that uh, the fire brigade team, which is at the spot, is working to uh, get uh, to get uh, control of the fire. As of now, it's completely not uh, doused off, but uh, uh, this fire that had broken out at around uh, around 4:50 a.m. this morning. Uh, this was in fact uh, in a go down which uh, had uh, wood in it. In fact, Zivandi, uh, giving you a brief background of what Zivandi is, Zivandi is an industrial area around Mumbai. Uh, wherein there are a lot of go-downs and uh, factories which exist in this uh, very uh, in this very case 
we see that uh, this was a godown which had wood in it and around 4:50 am was when the fire broke out there were uh, five fire brigade uh, vehicles which were rushed to the spot and as of now uh, the fire brigade team is still working uh, to douse uh, the fire uh, as of now there is no there is no update on any injuries or any casualties that have taken place in this but uh, considering that there is a petrol pump very close to uh, the uh, the godown where the fire broke out uh, fire brigade teams are being a little cautious so as to ensure that the fire does not uh, The Congress manifesto is in a lot of controversy and the Congress manifesto has evoked some very strong reactions coming in from the BJP and the man who was in charge of the 2004 winning slogan of Congress ka haath aam aadmi ke saath and now the Congress's slogan is Congress ka haath badlenge halat Mr Jairam Ramesh thank you so much for speaking to CNN news 18 Mr Jairam Ramesh is going to focus now because of the latest controversy and hear me out According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. Let me let me ask the Prime Minister. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, founder of the Bharati Jan Sang, was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahasabha of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the founder of the Jan Sang, was in league with the Muslim League in Sindh and Northwest Frontier. It was Mr. L. K. Advani and Mr. Jaswant Singh, leaders of the BJP. who went to pakistan and eulogized the leader of the muslim league the 